Okay. Uh, okay, last time I uh, neglected to leave this recording up. So I'll start today by um, doing a very quick recap of what I did yesterday. Uh, then we'll make some notes on where we're going with this. Uh, in summary, uh, we are creating an environment where we can uh, build Raspberry Pi images in a devops -y kind of way. Uh, in other words, we can do it programmatically rather than having to start up a, a real Raspberry Pi uh, and go in and install and ma manipulate the image that way. Uh, we'll do it all by uh, creating scripts and being able to do it on uh, a build machine of our choosing. Okay, so uh, yesterday I began by writing this code, um, which is just a very simple shell script. Uh, if I go actually look at the project, uh, let's go here. And uh, so we've got a vagrant file, uh, which is a very simple vagrant file. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look at that. Uh, <coughs> a bit laggy while the dry spin up. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is a very simple vagrant file. We're giving ourselves four gig of RAM, four CPUs on this virtual machine. I've created a virtual network to make it slightly easier later when we come to interact with this machine, uh, other than through the vagrant SSH. Uh, well, more on that later. Uh, and we just transfer files, uh, script files from this provision directory, uh, which is set up here. Uh, into the guest machine, which is going to be a, a Debian 10 machine in this instance. Uh, and then we execute a script called main. Okay, so it's very, very simple. Uh, and the script main, if we look at the provisioning, okay, there's the script main. And in actual fact, is this script over here, which, as I explained, uh, uh, We've divided up the steps that the script is going to actually execute into functions, which therefore makes them largely uh, self-describing. So you can see down the bottom there, we've got uh, update existing packages, uh, install the developer tools, and then install Docker, because uh, we're going to use Docker. Now, why are we going to use Docker? Uh, the build system that I'm going to set up uses uh, continuous uh, a continuous integration server called Concourse. And Concourse is based on the idea that every step in your build uh, is controlled by a container. Those containers are Docker containers. So we're sort of jumping ahead of it there. Okay, so what have we got so far? Uh, we've, got that, uh, we've got that virtual machine set up. Um, just for reference, uh, if you want to follow along with this, you're going to download Vagrant, uh, which is a HashiCorp tool for setting up virtual machines, again, from the command line. And um, it, it allows you to define your virtual machine, as you've seen uh, uh, down here. Uh, it, sets, it allows you to set up your code. Uh, and uh, in this case, we're just going, we're just using the virtual box uh, provider. Uh, so you're going to also need to download from uh, from the virtual box website. You'll need to download virtual box as well. Okay, just install the latest versions, uh, assuming you're following along later. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, so that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, if we just go and have a look at that machine, uh, if we log into the machine, so if we take an SSH into the virtual machine we've created, I think I left it running. Yeah, good, okay. So there's, there's nothing really in this machine at the moment. We've installed Docker, uh, so we can look at that with uh, systemctl. Uh, ah, 
Um, I'm allowed to type. Okay, so yeah, so Docker's running um, and it's all ready to go. Now, before we get there, let's talk about uh, what we're going to actually do with this. So, uh, uh, no, let's start a completely new window. Okay, and uh, go to what did I call it? PyBuild Stream, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's just create some notes. What are we actually trying to do? Well, uh, we're going to be using uh, a CI system uh, called uh, Concourse. Concourse, not Concourse. Oh, for crying out loud, Mark. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. Uh, we're going to be using Docker. Uh, and perhaps more significantly, we're going to be using containers uh, in order to keep all that work isolated. But before we get there, we need a way of um, controlling uh, running Raspberry Pi in a virtual machine. Now, to do that, we're going to use Greenview. Greenview technically. It's a bit of an odd beast, really. Uh, it, it is a virtual machine system in some instances, uh, but it's also uh, it, it it doesn't use. Um, uh, I'll rephrase that. It doesn't always use a KVM. In our instance, it's going to be using an emulator, so it's entirely a software emulation of the Raspberry Pi um, hardware. So we're going to use Queenview, uh, and we're going to use a, a genuine Raspberry Pi image. Okay, so we use a. Raspberry Pi image. So we'll be able to boot up a Raspberry Pi on uh, in our Queenview, uh, which is uh, um, or QEMU. Queenview, QEMU. Uh, so that we can then interact with the, with the virtual machine. Now, we're not going to be setting up a virtual machine with a graphical user interface. Uh, in fact, we're going to be installing a Raspberry Pi without a graphical user interface because for what I need it for anyway, it's redundant. Uh, you can if you want to, but it, it just introduces a whole load of um, overhead as far as I'm concerned on, on what I want to use my Raspberry Pi for. So we're going to just install it uh, without the graphical user interface. Uh, and we're going to run it up uh, and we're going to Importantly, we're going to start the SSH server on the Raspberry Pi so that we can interact with the Raspberry Pi via SSH once it's running. Otherwise, the only way of interacting with it, given that we don't have a graphical user interface, is through the console. Uh, and we don't want to do that. Uh, it, it, it's not ideal for what we want to do, namely set the machine up after it's up and running. So, uh, having got those things, we want to uh, start the Pi uh, with the SSH server running. Now, there are several ways we could do that, but fortunately, Raspberry, uh, the default Raspberry image, Raspbian, uh, has a neat trick, and that is if it sees a file, any file, called SSH, just SSH, uh, in its um, boot directory, it will initiate uh, the SSH server. Uh, more than that, actually, it starts the SSH server service so that subsequent boots will just get SSH anyway. So what we need to do is we need to patch the Raspbian image uh, to have SSH file in its boot set or its boot uh, directory. Okay, so that's our first problem. Okay, so our first problem is to actually get the uh, Raspbian image and to fiddle with it. Now I found two uh, resources for doing this. Um, one resource is just a script uh, that does precisely that. It, it 
it just patches the um, boot image to include this as an H bar. Uh, the second uh, resource is I found uh, by a chap called uh, Luke Charles um, a Docker Pi image. Now it does an interesting thing. It uses uh, a system called Fatcat, or a program called Fatcat, to actually extract the image that it's going to run. If it's going to run a Raspberry Pi or two, uh, two or three image, a Pi two or a Pi three image, uh, we don't really care at this point uh, what hardware is being emulated. Um, so we can run up it as a Pi one. And that's important to us because the Quimu uh, networking for Pi 2 and Pi 3 at the moment doesn't work. So we're going to have to start it up as a Pi 1. Okay. So we are going to, first of all, create our own version of the script to patch a Raspberry Pi image. Uh, and having created that script, we are then going to... Uh, uh, check that it works uh, by running up on our virtual machine directly a Quimu image, uh, uh, sorry, a Quimu system running the Raspberry Pi image that we have just patched. That makes sense? It will. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just write that and go back to our development screen. Okay, so step one, uh, we want to get the latest Raspberry Pi image. So let's flip back here and we're going to do a search for Raspbian. Uh, and what we want is we want the latest light image. Okay, so light image. So let's try that. And uh, right, so we've got Raspbian images. That looks like a good place to start. Isn't it? And uh, we want uh, Raspberry Pi website downloads page. Nice. Now we don't want any of this rubbish. Uh, I mean, they're all very good bits and bobs to play with if you want to play around with a Raspberry Pi, but we want the most basic stuff. So let me just see what's under here. You see, this is the Buster desktop. Don't really want the desktop. Uh, let's go back to downloads. Uh, ah, here we go. This is what we want. Pi OS 32-bit light suite. Okay, so we want to download this zip. Now, if we download the zip, of course, uh, we have a problem, and that is that it will have downloaded it onto, in this case, my Mac. Now, and I want to download it programmatically. So what we want actually is that link. So if we just copy the link address and then go back to back to here. Um, now, bearing in mind I'm on my virtual machine, so I've got an empty directory here. So let's do a curl and just curl that uh, Raspberry Pi light latest, okay? Now, I have to know what's going to happen here, <laughs> and that is, we just get this, which is a 302, okay, and that means that it's redirecting. So, the latest link that we've got there, the, the, this link here, okay, is actually always going to be a redirected link to whichever image it is, okay, so it's going to be a redirected image to, in this case, this zip file, okay. Uh, which is the what, 25th of May, uh, sorry, 27th of May, 2020. Right? So far, so good. So how do we get Curl to follow that? Well, we can give it the minus L. Uh, uh, wait a minute, I haven't set this up to Vi yet, have I? Look at minus L. Okay, so the minus L uh, tells it that I want to follow this, if this link is actually a redirect, namely 302, then I should follow the link that it's pointing to. 
and what this warning is telling me is yeah great um, but that link is actually a binary so we don't want to out the, output that to our terminal we want to output that to um, an actual file okay so let's call it uh, file system dot zip all right so here you can see that initially we downloaded this little bit of HTML and then because we put minus L it centers off and it's now downloading a much larger file uh, and we're redirecting that to file system zip all right. so it's all a little bit long-winded but baby steps So while that's downloading, oh, <laughs> oh, it's just finished. Right, okay, so now we've got this file system.zip. So uh, let's just try unzip and the file system. Unzip's not found. All right, so that's another thing we need to install. Then. We need to install whatever's going to be unzipping. So let's try uh, apt-get install. Mm, let's try unzip. And try doing it again, but this time as a super user. Cool. Okay, so we can just get the package unzip. And uh, let's try that now. Excellent. Okay, so that's what we want. So we need to add unzip to our list of tools. Now, I've just installed it manually, but we've got here. Um, so we've installed Docker. Let's add another line here to install what should we call this uh, let's call this um, patch tools because that's what we're going to be doing and let's uh, put in install patch tools Oops. my abysmal typing okay so this is going to be very much the same sort of deal as before we're going to do a get uh, so we now need unzip okay so far so good right okay so we've now got this uh, we've, we've unzipped this uh, image file now this image file actually has uh, two partitions in it. Uh, now, how can I show you that? Um, let's do uh, brain do your thing. If we do F, F disk, uh, oh, do I actually have a F disk installed? Uh, if I do, it's probably going to be a privileged command, isn't it? Let's go sudo minus i and then F disk. Ah! Excellent. Okay, so there's there's the F disk, right? and uh, I'm guessing that minus L just lists the thing. So if we do F disk, uh, let's go back to Bagman's home directory. So F disk minus L, and uh, it's, determined, it's determined to make me work with this. Uh, Try that again. Uh, let's try control B. Right, so back to the beginning. Oh yes, of course you've got to do it the long way, haven't you? Uh, word. Put that in the thing. Escape A and uh, every time. Let me do it. Uh, 
this is a problem when you set up a virtual machine for the first time. Mm, right. Mm. Let's try that one more time. Fix some of these things because this is not acceptable. Um, HF dot img. Right. Okay, that's what I really wanted. Okay, so you can see we've got two uh, two partitions. Okay, so we've got this one, which is with the img one. We've got this one, which is with img two. Okay, this first one is the FAT32. That's the boot. Partition. Uh, so uh, when we do the startup sequence, the BIOS will actually look at this and will load that into a RAM disk, and that will start the boot process, uh, which will then mount this Linux partition as our main file system and get us up and running. Right. Uh, so that's all we need to know about at the moment, other than we need to know that it's uh, 512 byte blocks, uh, which allows us then to calculate the start and end of these things. Cool. Right, now then, the patch file that we're going to write uh, is actually, or the patch utility we're going to write, is actually something that will run on the host machine, not on the Raspberry Pi. So we don't need to upload it um, to the Raspberry Pi to run it, but we do need to load it onto this virtual machine here. Okay, so we need to load it onto, onto our virtual machine. I can actually run it on, on the Mac, which is the, the main host. This is getting very confusing, isn't it? Let's see if we can clarify this. Um, right, so we've got, we've got three machines involved here, okay? We've got the host machine, which is the host on which I'm running all this system. That's my Mac. Then we've got the VM, which is this thing, the Vagrant box, the Debian 10 machine. And then thirdly, we've got the Raspberry Pi, which is going to be running on the Debian 10 virtual machine. Clear? So we've actually got three machines in our stack. At the very bottom, we've got the machine you're using, Windows, doesn't matter what it is, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS, whatever. On that, we're running a virtual machine. Okay, that gives us a nice standardized environment, so we all agree on what we're doing. And then on that virtual machine, we run the Quimu uh, in order to emulate the Raspberry Pi. Now, of course, we could skip the virtual machine out. Uh, you can do all of this directly on whatever machine you're using. But uh, by introducing the virtual machine in the middle, it means that we can all have the same environment, so you can understand what I'm doing, hopefully. Uh, albeit with the dodgy explanations. All of this, by the way, will be edited eventually into a proper course and set of notes, but we're streaming. This is just for fun. This is just preliminary testing, if you like. Okay, so we've got this Raspberry image. So the next thing uh, I want to do is actually uh, just to get that thing to boot. Okay, now to get that to boot uh, is a bit tricky because first thing we need to do is install the QEMU or QEMU uh, emulator system. Uh, then uh, we need to actually get that image to run up. Unfortunately, uh, it won't run up uh, on its own account. Uh, and that is because the Raspberry Pi hardware is just slightly different uh, to what uh, the QEMU system is expecting to provide for the Raspberry Pi 1. 
for Raspberry Pi 2 and Raspberry Pi 3, we can actually use an, uh, a kernel image which is embedded in the uh, in this image here. Okay, uh, it's actually on that boot sector. Um, we can use that directly. But for the Raspberry Pi 1, we need a specially patched image. It's a good job this isn't complicated, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, just flip back to our thing. And now then, if I remember correctly, it's on GitHub. And it's called something like... Uh, now, what's it called? It's called... Oh, wait a minute, I took a copy of it. Here we go, Raspberry Network. Right, so this is the one, this is the image, this is the, <laughs> this is the utility that will actually run up QueenView uh, with, uh, run up a Raspberry Pi image on QueenView. Okay, so this thing here, uh, this, this script will run it. Now, we're not going to actually use this script in its entirety, but we are going to steal some ideas from it. Uh, uh, and you'll see why later, because we're going to uh, use uh, a, a, a different uh, method for starting these up, because we're going to use the Docker image. But this provides us with some useful insights about the way this works. So let's let's take a look at this. Okay. Uh, let's just let's just take a look at this and see how it works. Hmm? Yeah, it, it's always useful to look at these things. Uh, so this is just setting up uh, some uh, variables. Uh, this is checking that we've got QueenView installed. Uh, this is just getting the name of the uh, the main interface. Okay. Now I won't go too detailed on the way this thing hooks up the interface because it's not going to be relevant for what we're going to need. It's kind of cool because what it does is actually sets up a, uh, a bridge network device and then puts the Raspberry Pi inside that bridge network device uh, to give it a way straight out uh, onto our network. We don't need to worry about most of that because we get that for free um, when we uh, put it inside a Docker container. We'll see that in a minute. The bit we're interested in is uh, right, so all of this stuff is just setting up that bridge network. Right, the bit we're interested in is here. Okay, this is the bit we're interested in. Uh, not because of what it actually does. Uh, well, it is because of what it does, but it, it, it's not just because of what it does, but also because of the way it does it. So the first thing it does is it isolates uh, the two uh, images on that uh, Raspberry Pi image, uh, the two partitions rather. Okay, so that's what these bits of code here do. All right. Um, in this case, it's looking for. Let's just go back to here. Uh, if you remember when we did the F disk, okay, under here. Okay, you can see that we've got this FAT32 on the line which is describing everything about that device. Right? And that's what this grep is doing. Okay, so that's our F disk, exactly the same as we. Okay, so that's our F disk, exactly as we've just done on the command line. And we're isolating the line with FAT32 on it, and then. We're taking the second field. Okay. And that's the second field, which is the number of blocks from the start of the image, and that is the start of the actual image file, at which this partition begins. Okay, and we're calling that. We're calling that sector one, and then we do exactly the same thing, but we're looking for Linux now. Okay, so we're looking for this Linux, 
right? And we're calling that sector two. And then we calculate the real offset because you've got to remember that those um, that these are just the okay. These are measured in blocks. Okay, but we need the offset in bytes. Or well, each block is five hundred and twelve bytes. All right, so we calculate the offset one and two by multiplying by five hundred and twelve. Who said it was difficult? This next section, okay, is making a temporary mount point and mounting that image, but with the specific offset the offset one. Okay, which is the offset for this boot image. Uh, so it's a boot partition. Very confusing when they name the file ing. It's the boot partition. Okay, so we're mounting the boot partition to this temp mount point. Uh, to this temp mount point. Then this touch actually creates the SSH bar. Right, so all, that's all this does is just touches that SSH bar. So now what we've done is we've modified the actual image. Okay, so we've modified this actual file, this image file, by creating an SSH file on it. Then we unmount that temporary mount point. Okay, now this script then does a bit more magic. Uh, because what it does next is it mounts the Linux partition uh, and it creates these uh, Queemu rules, uh, which all they do basically is create a, a fake mapping between devices. Okay, uh, when the um, Raspberry Pi boots, it's expecting uh, these devices to be present. Okay. Uh, and what actually is provided by Queemu is these devices. OK, so in order to solve that problem, what, what this chap's done is he's created this sort of mangling, which allows us to have the best of both worlds, where we create these symbolic things from these devices to these devices. It's quite clever, actually. Uh, we don't need to worry about this patch because we're not going to be running that version of Queemu. Uh, then we just unmount that temporary mount point. So now what we've done is we've patched both the Linux image itself in order to add the devices, and we've patched the boot sector in order to have the SSH file in place. All right. And then this next section is the bit that actually runs Queenview. Okay, so this runs Queenview. Hurrah. Okay, so in order to divorce the patching of the image from the actual uh, execution by Queenview because we're, we're going to do this slightly differently. The patching we still want to be in a script. Uh, the uh, so, so we can basically take any image file in any context as long as we can run uh, bash on it in a, in a privileged uh, process. Uh, we want to just be able to write that SSH file basically. So we want to be able to just patch that SSH file in. Um, and then, uh, as a second thing, we want to work on how we're going to actually run uh, the Queenview image. Now, in order to do that, we're going to use uh, a, a different uh, Docker. We're going to go to a chap called Luke Charles, who's done all the work for us, all the basic work for us. Okay. Um, Search for GitHub for that. Um, that's what it was called. Um, nope, maybe not. Uh, no, Docker Pi, not Docker sometimes, honestly. Okay. So this is what we're going to use to actually run the Queen Beauty image. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this and um, we won't use it blindly. We will actually go through what this thing's actually doing. But broadly speaking, we're going to be using 
we're going to be using this um, to run our um, DockerPy image. Okay. Uh, and I say broadly speaking because we're not going to be actually using that because we are going to be mounting it. So we're going to be using the minus V uh, option. There we go. Something more like this. Yeah. So we'll be using something along those lines uh, to actually run the thing. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there shortly. Okay, so first order of business then is to be able to patch any Raspbian image that we download. Mm, right, so uh, let's do that. Uh, how should we do this best? Let's uh, okay. Let's create a uh, a new file. Uh, so, uh, I'll leave that one open for a time being. Uh, so let's edit a new file. Uh, we'll just put it into the root directory zone. And let's just make sure. Uh, okay, so we're on the streams pie builder. Good. Okay, so we're in the root directory. So let's um, edit a new file and we'll call it uh, patch. Let's call it just patch pie. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a shell script. If you want to be completely thorough about that, I, I, I always habitually set minus EU. So E causes the script to fail immediately on error. U stops any um, unassigned variables. So it will fail if you haven't assigned a variable uh, and try to use it. Uh, there is another one, uh, pipeline, uh, which will call any, cause any pipelines to fail as well. So if you pipe commands together and something within the pipeline fails, the whole pipeline fails. Um, ah, it doesn't really help. Uh, right, okay, let's leave that in. Uh, okay, so we've got our script started. Uh, let's put our uh, hint line in. Provide um, set file to um, set file type. Okay, uh, right, so we want to use that trick from before, uh, but first thing we'll do is we'll uh, get the uh, image file, we'll assume the image file is going to be the Thing passed in. So uh, let's set the image file equal to um, dollar first parameter. Uh, we won't bother with a default because the first thing we'll do is check and say. Uh, if it's not a file, uh, if not a file, uh, then uh, I just want to do exit. Ah, let's be nice. Um, echo. Uh, and, uh, Ah, that'll do. Close enough for government work. And exit with as long as it's an error code. Um, what 
we give it exit with fine. Okay, so uh, so what that's done is let's uh, exit out. Uh, actually, uh, hmm. okay. So you can see the development problem I've got now is that that patch pie is actually on my Mac, and I want to be really. I should be editing it on the Pi Builder build. Let's just have a look. Let's vagrant. Oops. Ah, that's handy. Right, okay, let's. Uh, so the file system is being mounted properly. So let's write that and then quit. Because I don't want to be editing it over there. And I do want to be editing it over here. Ah, now then, this brings the next problem, which is all of my part, all of my Vi setup is actually on my Mac. So I could really do with running my VimRC across and the package manager across. Ah, we'll manage for now. Uh, so let's do vagrant slash patch pipe. Alright, colour scheme is different to what I like, but it'll do. Okay. Uh, so I've just switched over to the virtual machine so that I can run it and test it interactively. Uh, let's just do a split. And, uh, it's helping I go to the project. Okay. All right, that just lets me run it. Uh, so we can we can check out our first uh, thing by doing touch uh, point. Good, set pipe, uh, set, nah. Um, and what have I done wrong there? It's not called pipeline, is it? Uh, okay. Well, bugger me. This just goes to show that I don't use this option very, very often. Am 
Why is Oak Pip? Yeah, mine is the oh, pipe fail. I suppose that makes sense. Okay. Unbound variable. I suppose that's a bad one because I haven't passed anything in. Uh, if I do, uh, hmm, what do you know? There you go. Interesting. Now you can get around that error, I guess, by supplying a default value of nothing. Done. Oh, that's substitution. Hmm. I'm just going to put a space in there. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, well, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll sort that out later. Right, okay, so uh, we've got our image file. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is do that funky trick. Uh, oh, I suppose it helps if you switch back. Um, right, uh, okay, so we've changed it to pipe fail. Uh, now, what I want to do now is do that funky trick for extracting the boot section. So we want the same thing as that F disk. Uh, so we know we want F disk minus L. Uh, actually, this raises an interesting problem because uh, at the moment we're assuming we're going to be running it under bash and we're assuming that we're going to be running it under hmm. okay I'll, I'll, I'll show you what the problem is uh, if I quit just uh, shall I quit our, yeah let's quit out of here because I, I want to show you this because okay on here okay uh, if we run F disk on here right this is the format of the output Right. But if I run up a Docker image uh, of, say, BusyBox, which is one of the BusyBox or Alpine, either will do. Um, if I if I do Docker run it, oops, Docker run it, uh, it doesn't really matter. Really. Uh, if we do Alpine uh, and then I'll just run a shell, ah. oh, I didn't. Oh, idiot. Right. Okay, so now I'm in the Alpine shell on the Docker image. Okay, if I do FDisk on here, it's going to throw a wobbly because FDisk probably isn't installed. Oh, it is. Good. <laughs> Uh, shows what I know. Um, the problem is that uh, the output from this is very different to uh, the output uh, of the other. And so if I do, uh, where am I? Uh, let's do current directory back to the vagrant there. Yeah, to the vagrant. 
Right, so we've got that. If I mount that, if I mount this whole white vagrant directory as something, uh, mm, yeah, I think I can just do it by doing uh, mounting. Let's do. Yeah, let's just mount them. Yeah, let's mount that as favorite. And then, right, so there's the image mounted inside the Docker image. So if I now do that fdisk list of um, vagrant 2020 on here. Now you can see the problem, right? Okay, so if I do the F disk on uh, a full uh, Debian ten, that's the F disk output. Okay, if I do the F disk on uh, uh, an Alpine image, uh, so if I'm running it within the, then that's the output, and you can see there's a difference. Okay, so if I just extracted using awk if I just use if, if I just extracted field two that would be field one and that would be field two which is what I want if I do it on here then that would be field one and that would be field two uh, which is not what I want okay what I want is that which on here is one two three field four you see the problem. Right. Ooh. Now they missed it. Let's take a quick break. Uh, how long have we been going? Long enough. Right, take a quick break and then I'll come back.